A very good morning to you. How are you doing? And welcome to Inspiration Monday on Life and Style. I'm your host, Mukali. And on Motivate Today, we are at the moment we could tell and residences in Nairobi in the heart of Westlands. One beautiful gem that you should be here. Uh, you should come here and see. But we're here to talk to the GM, Mr. Andreas Flukiger, who has an amazing story. From a cook to a GM, how did he make those strides? Let's go talk to him. Spaces you have here. This is our lobby. Great, great. Yes. Trying to put in nature, right? In, <laughs> in concrete. Absolutely. There's so much nature in uh, in Kenya, so we need to really incorporate bring, it. Incorporate it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. It looks really nice. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. How have you been? I've been great since the last yes. time I saw you. Yes, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. what's happening? I'm not. Well, we've been very busy. Yeah. Luckily. Yes, the last couple of weeks. So okay. Yeah. Great, great. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Ah, are you here? Ah, yes. thank you. Thank you so much for hosting us and creating time for us, Andreas. It's, it's an honor to, you know, it's not every day you find time to just talk to the media. And we're not just here to talk about yeah. Morgan Pig because you're a very, very um, intriguing part of this amazing family. And that really? is why we're here. Yes, of course. All right. And I'm glad to have met you. Last time I was here, you were talking different languages. How many languages do you, do you speak in Japanese? Depends on how you count, but about <laughs> eight, up or down, so... Whoa! Yes. Self-taught? <clears throat> uh, mostly, yes. Well, a bit at school, and then uh, mostly when I lived in different places around the world, so this is then where I picked up the languages. Great, and now you're in Africa, you're in Kenya. Is it the yes. first time? First uh, time. First yes. time to be here. Yes. How is it so far? Very good. Very good. What is your best, I'm sure you're going to say Morgan Peak is like the best place to be in, in Kenya right now in Nairobi, but what other place <coughs> which is, the, is the one place that you really, really, really love about Nairobi and Kenya as a, as a whole? Well, there are many different places. What I really like is uh, the climate, though the last few months have not been that, uh, that generous in terms of uh, sunshine. sunshine, yes. yes. Uh, but yeah, the climate is really fantastic here, plus uh, people are very friendly, very welcoming, so uh, in that sense, uh, any place in Kenya is, is really a nice place. Great, you know, you have quite a gem here. And mm -hmm. we're going to talk about this in just a short while. But first we'd like to understand <coughs> who Andreas is. Who's this man? Where did he come from? Uh, and the journey that he has had to take <coughs> before he got here. Well, the journey started 37 years ago. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when I started my apprenticeship in the kitchen in Switzerland. So I made a three years apprenticeship as a cook. Uh, thereafter, I worked uh, in the kitchen in different places. And then uh, after a few years, I joined a hotel management school in Switzerland uh, mm -hmm. again. And after that, I, I left Switzerland, uh, traveling the world, working in different hotels in different countries uh, until I reached here. You know, it's so interesting that you started off as a cook because most people, um, especially in this generation, they're called the microwave generation, mm -hmm. where they want to start now and be the GM now yes. and make that a huge amount of money, big check right now. But that was not it for you. And did you always want to get into the hospitality industry when you were growing up? No, it was coincidence. How so? Interesting. It was coincidence because a year earlier, my sister started the apprenticeship as a cook. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she ended up in the kitchen was a mistake. Oh. Yes. Okay. By the person who had organized her uh, to make a stage in a different place. So she was supposed to do a stage in housekeeping. They put her into the kitchen. She liked it. Uh -huh. There and you go. She was. And because of my sister, I started my apprenticeship. 
what is it that you were thinking? Like, you know, when you grow up, there are those questions you're asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And it's a very interesting question because I like to ask that because most people <coughs> definitely do not end up, most of them do not end up doing what they thought they were supposed to be doing. What was it for you? Uh, one was a carpenter and the other one uh, was a medical doctor. And what stopped you from that? Life. It was just uh, bound to happen. Ah, hi. hi, Catherine. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so, a carpenter yes. or a doctor yes. getting into medicine, so what stopped you from being that? Life. It, it was just, uh, I didn't really know what to do. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, just saw my sister enjoying, so I said, I'll do the same. <laughs> And everybody in the family was like, you're crazy, but, but you're not going to fit into the kitchen, etc. But uh, I did, and I did it, and I, I loved it. I still love it. Do you still go to the kitchen once in a while? I all go into the, well, anyway, I visit all departments uh, every day <laughs> okay. as, as much as possible. Okay. Kitchen is always part of it, uh, but then also uh, at home I cook. Okay, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, it's interesting that um, though the kitchen is a very, very important part mm -hmm. of every hotel. It could have beautiful spaces, but if the kitchen is not right, then there's definitely something wrong with our hotel. And I have to say, Movent Peak has really, really, really good food. Thank you. Really good food. But you know, growing up the ranks from the from the cook, mm -hmm. going to the next rank and then the next rank to Movent Peak in Nairobi, Kenya, how was that journey for you? In terms of the challenges along the way, did you have to go back to school to study a few things? Well, um, after hotel management school, I started as uh, assistant food and beverage manager in. Uh, in Holland and then uh, Belgium and then I worked <coughs> quite a few years in the food and beverage department mm -hmm. until then uh, I got the opportunity then for my first uh, GM position in uh, 2002. How old were you then? In uh, Kuwait. I was uh, 36. You look still 46, I, I, I have to say that. Like. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, you're too kind. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, so after that? That's all the cucumber, you know, I put uh, to my face. <laughs> Okay, it's working. It's yeah. working. I should try it sometime. Yeah. Okay. So you got so, into the GM. Yeah. Then uh, you, you know it's uh, uh, it has been a smooth ride here and there. It has been a rocky ride here and there because that's uh, that's how life is. Absolutely. Um, a lot of course is about uh, your performance, but also a lot is about right time, right place. And, and sometimes you miss the right time, right place, and sometimes you hit the right time, right place. So. Uh, but I can't complain. Uh, Not at all. There are no. different things that happen in different places, from cultures mm -hmm. to myths and taboos and things that you have to relearn and unlearn. Because moving from one country to another, that means learning new things every other day. Has it that been a challenge for you, or is it like a stepping stone for you mm -hmm. getting into school to learn the different languages? Mm -hmm. No, uh, let's say, as uh, personally, it, it's not a challenge, and mm -hmm. I really enjoy. Uh, get to know new countries, new people, new cultures, new languages. It is, uh, since I traveled with a family, uh, the last now 16 years, so that makes it more challenging. Yeah. Uh, when they're still small, it's okay, but once they reach uh, school age, once they become teenagers, then... Uh, they need something stable. Yes, they need, uh, they need and want a bit more uh, stability. So that's, that's then the it becomes, only bit uh, challenging. Yes. Great. And having traveled the world and you know having and setting up such an amazing place in Kenya right now, how would you compare that? What's some of our highlights compared to the rest of places of the world? I'm going to find out what's your favorite place then. But so far, so far, it's been it's been a while since uh, <clears throat> Modern Peak was opened here. Well, it's uh, you know everywhere you have challenges and and. Uh, in, in, in different countries you have different challenges uh, that, that you face because of just uh, how the countries are, how people are, how society is, how the legislation is. So you, you find different challenges everywhere. Uh, yeah. uh, yes. And what's your favorite place in the world, having traveled that much? I'm not going to answer that question. Why? <laughs> Why? Because I know you want to hear Kenya, of course. <laughs> You'd better be nice to us. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, have some uh, have some coffee first <laughs> we'll before do, we'll let do. me dwell on that uh, on that answer. Uh, this is how you evade from that question, isn't it? Now the no, modern pick modern pick is known for a few things, and mm. I'll tell you my favorite one. It's the chocolate tower. 
Yes. Is this a tradition of the hotel or is it just the Move and Peak in Nairobi? No, that's a Move and Peak uh, signature. So uh, all Move and Peak hotels have uh, every day during one hour uh, the chocolate hour. And it's usually it's to be the, the busiest hour uh, in the day, so to, to reach as many people as possible. Great. So what times are those for everyone who's watching and wondering, is this happening in Kenya, Nairobi right now? Yes, it is. Where can, what time is it that they can just show up? It doesn't yeah. mean that you have to be in the hotel for lunch no. or anything. No, you can just show up mm -hmm. as you like. For now, it's between four and five o'clock. Okay. Does that mean yes. it changes? It may change uh, in the future, depending on how business evolves and depending on how the, the arrival times will be of, of our guests. So that may change. For now, it's uh, four to five o'clock. This is a tradition that has been going on for a long time for the Morven Peak Hotels. What inspired it? Because I think it's very, very unique, I think, to many, many hotels that I've yes. been to. Well, Switzerland and chocolate obviously go uh, hand in hand. Hand in hand, true. So um, this is where, where it comes from. And just to, uh, you know, it's a lot about heritage. And uh, yes, chocolate is... Chocolate is, is Switzerland. It's Switzerland. <laughs> Yes, Absolutely. don't tell the Belgium because they <laughs> probably not. wouldn't agree. But uh, Sally is in Belgium, as she told you that. <laughs> is she? Well, I talked to her afterwards, and we'll sort that one out. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm sorry, Sally. I'm sorry, Sally. But um, you know, for every person, for you to get up the ranks and do the things that you love to do, there are particular principles or particular uh, driving forces that you have, and. Um, as a person who leads other people, mm -hmm. there are things that leaders should have. Mm -hmm. And there's some things that make or make you as Andreas good at what you do. Mm -hmm. What would you say are those driving forces for you as a person? Um, well, maybe you should ask my colleagues uh, these questions. <laughs> you know, because uh, they eventually are the ones who, uh, who, who see me and who, who would uh, judge me uh, within brackets. Um, but uh, what... What really is important is uh, walk the talk, leading by example, mm -hmm. uh, be true to yourself. Uh, if you want to uh, get discipline, be disciplined yourself. Um, fairness as well uh, is very important. Uh, open communication, open door policy. Yeah. Uh, I think these are the the most things, uh, that yes. are important yes. for a leader to do so that the rest can uh, follow the leader yes. like the pack should follow they say that if the pack is not going right the problem is with the leader yes. so if everything is in line that that means you're doing a great job and when you talk about the people that when you came here you had a vision and a mission to accomplish you know mm -hmm. you had or oh, moving picking at large had a few things that they put together that made it a very successful hotel over the years. Um, when you're getting people to get in line with that, people from different cultures, mm -hmm. there are a few things that really stand out that must be key. First of all, I, I have to give it up for the <laughs> hospitality in this place that mm -hmm. is really, really amazing. Thank but also some other things that you look for when you are hiring people or people who are in the hospitality industry should have. Mm -hmm. Attitude. Attitude? Yes. Attitude. Okay. Uh, attitude before skills. Of course, there are some, some positions uh, which are very technical, where skills are really highly important. Uh, still, attitude remains important. Then you have uh, certain positions where skills are not that important because they can be taught, but really attitude is, uh, is key. But in general, for everybody counts uh, attitude. Above skills, I like that, yes. and I hope everyone is listening about that because attitude is everything. It yes. is everything. The Morven Peak. What are some of the amazing things that people can come here to experience? What sets it apart from everything mm. else that is in uh, Nairobi right now? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we have big spaces. Uh, our rooms, our guest rooms, are very big. Uh, Forty-six uh, square meters. Wow. We have. Uh, Ballroom 700 square meters, we have an exhibition hall 1100 square meters and we have lots of other spaces that can be used for, uh, for events, uh, for functions, for exhibitions, so um, really spaces are big and, and generous. There's lots of light uh, as well. I can test to that, look at that. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. and we have the revolving restaurant which is uh, very unique. Let's talk about that for a bit, because it's like the highlight. Everybody, when they talk about Move and Pick, they will definitely highlight about that. When you talk about revolving, what exactly do you mean? 
it actually goes round? Well, not the whole structure. <laughs> would be a bit difficult. <laughs> but uh, there is like a, like a circle in the restaurant that is actually turning. And it takes about an hour, 20 minutes uh, for one turn. So by the time you're done with your full course? Exactly, more or less for a regular uh, meal time. Yes, by the time you're done, you've seen the whole uh, panorama. Beautiful, yes. beautiful. What else is there? Well, there's Swiss food mm -hmm. in, uh, in the rolling restaurant, which is called The View, um, including cheese fondue, etc. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a nice experience. You have, uh, you have a beautiful view. Uh, yeah. Get, in different uh, restaurants. In, in different restaurants, yes. Plus also what we have, uh, we have La Mesa on the 15th, 16th floor, which is our tapas place, where also it's, it's, it's a bit of a lounge uh, restaurant, uh, sports bar, uh, so multifunctional. Just now we are showing the, the World Cup, so there's lots of uh, big screens as well. So it's a place to, to unwind, you can go just for a drink and a few snacks or just meet up with friends, uh, etc. So very informal. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. I love the Sunday brunch. I don't know why you're not talking about the Sunday brunch. It's like mm. the eat Sunday place to be at. <laughs> Sunday brunch, uh, we started uh, a few weeks back. Yes. And uh, in Baluba, our all day dining restaurant on the second floor. And it's just uh, located by the poolside. So anybody that comes for brunch can also jump into the pool. Um, and yes, we have a huge variety of uh, local, Asian, international food uh, with different stations, a uh, huge selection of pastries, so uh, yes. It's, it's a whole entire day of just eating and having a yes. good time and enjoying and, the beautiful spaces. Yes, and you get uh, free throw sangria with it as well, uh, not to forget to mention. Yes. <laughs> and the heated pool. And the heated pool, exactly. <laughs> Which Absolutely. is big as well, again, it's, it's almost 40 meters long, so... Uh, Great. There yeah. were so many other places that Movin Peak would have gone in Eastern Africa. Mm -hmm. they, they, they would have been, it could have been in Uganda or Rwanda or Ethiopia yes. or wherever. Yes. But why Kenya? Why come to Kenya? Mm -hmm. What is it about Kenya that, you know, appeals yes. to this um, Swiss uh, hotel? Well. Um, Kenya is the hub of uh, Eastern Africa, you know, so, <clears throat> and there's, we for now don't have any, any other property in the area, so for us it was important to uh, first uh, settle in, uh, in Nairobi, uh, open up the hotel and with that base then reach out to the neighboring countries. So that is because somewhere you need to start yeah. and it's, it's good to start in, in the hub of an area uh, because a lot of visitors come from neighboring countries. Uh, in and out for be it business reasons, be it uh, NGOs, be it the diplomatic community, etc. So it's uh, it's a good way then also to to market uh, your brand uh, yeah. to the neighboring countries. What next for? What, what is the next thing over the next place we are going as a hotel and for you as a person? I don't know what else the skills to have. You keep keep going up and up the ladder. So I don't know what next. What is it? What is it for you? Well, next, there's still one part of the hotel that uh, remains to be opened. There's one wing with uh, 94 units, uh, studios and, and guest rooms and presidential suite, which is uh, not open yet. <coughs> In the same wing, uh, we have six meeting rooms and a breakout area as well. There is a spa, uh, plus also there's space for more restaurants. So there's still quite some work to be done here, you know, in order to, to be fully opened. Great, and for you as an as a Andreas, Yes. What is it? What, where, where do you want to go next after this? So this is an amazing baby that yes. you're growing here. Yes. And it will grow and it will fly. <laughs> and we'll have others come in. And what happens to you next? Where do you see yourself going after this? Uh, well, it's difficult to say because, you know, each time you, you have dreams or visions where you would like to end up uh, yes. as a next destination, yeah. it turns out completely different. <laughs> so, uh, you know, at one stage you, you stop thinking about that, but mm. then... Uh, no, of course, uh, some, some planning is needed, uh, timely planning, because, mainly because of the children and, and to school. So, of course, one, one cannot move overnight uh, to a new place. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you, you cannot start thinking too early about it. And it's, as I said, proper planning, uh, and timely everything. decisions, and then uh, uh, we see where, where life will take us next. And where's the keep mentioning children? How many children are we talking? I have three. Three boys, yes. girls? Two boys and a girl. Ah, great. 
How old are they? They are 16, 14 and 11 and a half. Beautiful. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We'll leave by particular philosophies. We have mantras that keep us going. We have mm -hmm. lines or books or people we look up to. And when we were younger, we probably have surpassed those people that we thought are our heroes. Who would you say was your hero growing up and did you go way and above and was it in the line that you're in right now? The hospitality industry. I don't really have no. such a hero, uh, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, yeah. uh, <clears throat> I have had uh, mentors that have, uh, in different mentors in different periods that have uh, guided me, supported me. Uh, grown me as a, as a personal, as a professional, um, but it's not like that there was that hero up the, there the one person, no. on top of the, the mountain. Like a um, Spider-Man, no? No, no? Wonder Woman? No, no. Not at all? No. And you know, mentorship is key and being at the place that you are, is this something that you do often with your staff, mentoring them, picking uh, you know, people to be apprentices or something like that? Yes. I have been uh, in, in, in various uh, various occasions. I've been um, officially, let's say, uh, a mentor uh, of uh, junior managers that uh, would uh, grow within the company. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, I've had official assignments, and then. But uh, mentoring for me is really something um, that comes natural, and. Why I say that? Because you, you, not always in everything you do, you, you think of mentoring, but then over the years, in, in quite a few occasions, I've been uh, told by co-workers, you know, I learned this from you, I learned that from you, and, and that's great to hear, and, and that for me means that there is some way of, of natural uh, mentoring in one way or the other. So, uh, and I like to share knowledge, uh, yeah. definitely, I'm not one of, people who keep things uh, inside me and no, the, the more uh, my team knows, the better they are, the easier for me, the better for me, the better for the guests, the better for everybody. So, Absolutely. Yeah. That is true. So as we come to the end of this conversation, have you learned any Swahili, Andreas? Um, you, you are a linguist. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, this is the time to show off. <laughs> no, it's not because... Uh, <laughs> no, it, it's just a few words. Uh, okay, I have to fine. be honest, I... Okay. Uh, no, uh, can, yeah, we the, the, Can we hear them? Can we hear them? A few words. Okay, Moja, great. Bili, Moja, uh, Bili. Apa, Pan, um, uh, of course, uh, Santesana, Karibu, uh, Mambo, Poa, uh, you know, uh, things like this. Uh, Hamsin. Hamsini. Which is the same like uh, in Arabic, you know, so that's easy. <laughs> so, ah, okay, okay. La Mesa, which means the table, and, but the Meza same like Spanish. Is, yes, so, yes. But, um, no, I, 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 I actually... I should sit down and spend a little bit of time every day to learn a few words because I'm gonna again uh, every every language is uh, is, is enriching and uh, yes uh, yes and it's part of the culture as well so absolutely there I have some uh, some work to be done yes. great so I'm gonna teach you one word today yes is that okay yes sure great I'm sure you know this word though tuna penda more than pick tuna penda more than pick. I'm sure you know that. You said it so easily. You know what that means, right? <laughs> Do you? Uh, no. We love more than pick. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so Panda is tuna, love. Tuna, tuna, tuna we, we, we. Yeah, because tuna visa, uh, we can. Tuna, tuna penda. So yes. we, so this is, yeah. You're good. So. It won't take a while. You so will. I learned two words. Yes, you did. Thank you so much for creating All time right. for us. Thank you as well, man. All right, great so people. This has been motivating at the GM Move and Peak Hotel in Westlands. Uh, Mr. Andres Flukega, and I've been your host, Mukali. If you have gotten anything from this conversation, just know that attitudes are very important, sometimes better than the skills, because they will determine what you learn and how you learn it, how you're able to run, relearn, and understand and move forward in whatever it is that you're doing. So attitudes come before skills. Taking a very short commercial break, when we come back, we have Katrin Wangi on Books and Blogs. Oh, yeah. So after eating mm -hmm. a full meal at breakfast, a mm -hmm. full meal at lunch, mm -hmm. will you still have a full meal at dinner? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. Oh, my I, goodness. I, I know. I, your goodness. <laughs> you will? <laughs>